Thank you. Yes, thanks very much. Thank you. Off. Right the way off. And take your Lionels with you. Now, it is extremely unlikely that Lord Carrington would be interested in either of these cars in the same way as he is not given to wearing a Hawaiian shirt while chairing a NATO meeting. George Michael, on the other hand, is given to wearing Hawaiian shirts, and he very probably would be interested in cars of this type. So what are they? Well, they're both new Japanese sports cars, and they both cost around £35,000. This is the Mitsubishi 3000 GT, and this is the new Mazda RX-7. Now, the question on the lips of every disco boy in the land is this. Which one is best? If you do buy a car like you buy a suit, you need good looks, and on that front, neither is disappointing. The Mazda especially is an organic sensation. With all those curves, it's just plain beautiful. I reckon it looks like an E-type Jag. If this was a suit, it would be of a type worn by John Travolta in 1976, i.e. tight. I know I'm six foot five, but this interior really was designed for absolute midgets. Even though there are no rear seats at all, the front is just microscopic. I've just got hardly any headroom at all. Mind you, the E-type similarities just keep on coming at you. I love these chromed white on black instruments, and I love the toys I've got. Air conditioning, power steering, cruise control. There's even an airbag provided as standard. There is, in short, plenty to play with when the car in front of you hasn't moved for an hour and a half. But there is even more in this, the Mitsubishi 3000 GT. Quite apart from the usual array of toys, all of which combine to make the Porsche 968 look about as empty as a Maxwell pension fund, this also has a stereo so advanced that only our sound recordist has been able to work it out, and a wonderful two-stage air conditioning system. On economy, it freezes mercury. On full AC, it can give you hypothermia. Oh my god, it turned it off! There are drawbacks to both cars, though. The GT is vast, which is a nuisance when you're threading through city traffic. And the Mazda is very hard work. Run over a cat's eye, and it breaks your back. But these really are trifling considerations, because while both these cars will undoubtedly sell to the trend-setting urban nightclubist, both were actually designed for the open road. Out here, the Mitsubishi size and the RX-7's lumpiness simply don't matter. Both will top 160 miles an hour. Both get from 0 to 60 in five seconds or thereabouts. Both are a thrill a minute. The Mazda achieves this with a back-to-basics approach. Small, ultra-light and ultra-powerful. It's a point-and-squirt car, this. Simple, straightforward and great fun. The engine, however, is quite a complicated affair. That is a Wankel rotary unit. Now it has two turbochargers. The first is tiny and works up to 4,000 RPM, when the second, a much bigger one, cuts in, it must be said, with something of a jerk. Then this thing really starts to fly. If you're a keen driver, you live in Northumberland where the roads are empty and you've just found 35,000 pounds in an old suit pocket, this car is a cracker. Now the Mitsubishi is a way different animal. While the Mazda takes us back to basics, this takes us to the 33rd century. The engine here is a 3 litre V6 with 24 valves and double overhead camshafts. But it also has two turbochargers and two intercoolers. Somewhere in there anyway. The net result is 281 horsepower, which, let's face it, is enough. However, the engine is just one ingredient. Let me list some of the others. It's got four-wheel drive, four-wheel steering, four-wheel anti-lock brakes, and while we're on the subject of four, four seats. Well, sort of. This is like a mobile version of Euro Disney. It has trick suspension, which tugs the car down on its haunches as the speed builds up. And it has what's called active aerodynamics. At 50 miles an hour, the rear spoiler changes shape to make sure the car is cleaving the air as neatly as possible. It doesn't excite quite like the Mazda, but believe me, it covers ground every bit as quickly. 
I drove one across America last year and I loved it. It was quiet, fast, extremely comfortable and at the end of the day, one hell of a pose. So, whether you're in town or out in the countryside, they're just about inseparable. Choosing between the two is nigh on impossible. Well, I've had these cars for about three weeks now and it's crunch time. Which one would I choose? Well, it's a bit like being in a restaurant. You've had the menu in front of you for 20 minutes and the waiter walks up. Uh, I have the... the Mazda. No, no, the Mitsubishi. Yes, it's, uh, it's more comfortable. More like a big American car. Definitely the Mitsubishi. Probably, definitely. But once I'd paid the bill, I know I'd end up thinking, I should have gone to a different restaurant altogether. Then I could have had one of these. The Jaguar XJS is £2,000 cheaper and a little bit more English country gentleman. A little less nutters all night disco boy. Know what I mean?